Good afternoon, nerd friends. Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. We're going to go over a topic that is near and dear to my heart. It's half the reason I have a job. Calibration. A lot of times it gets overlooked or there's problems with it and you got to call tech support or send an email. So we're going to touch over a few things to get through that calibration process. Now, if you didn't know, calibrating of any speed control is necessary so that the speed control can learn the radio's neutral, uh, full throttle, and full reverse or full brake output. And a lot of us would assume that those are universal, that everything's digital, you know what I mean? But it's not. The radios have different settings and adjustments and stuff like that that will actually change that output. And over time, you can make your radio not be able to be calibrated to a speed control. For this example, I have a classic Fusion SE on the table. It's connected to my uh, throttle channel of my receiver, and it does matter the direction that these wires go. Sometimes they'll fit both directions on most receivers. The black wire that's on that little harness or the negative, if they're all black, they're, they're marked on the edge of the plastic. It was going to go to this outside edge of the receiver uh, for proper connection. A lot of times the receivers have markings on them that tell you which way all that stuff's supposed to go. So just pay attention to that stuff because it does in fact matter. You want to use a fully charged battery if you can. I often use half charged batteries and typically don't have much of a problem, but every once in a while uh, they do act a little goofy. Uh, radio is turned on and the calibration process for a one button speed control is a long press and a hold to get the process started. If you have a two button speed control, you're going to hold the set button turn the power on, and then do the same process, but use that set button as your tap instead of the one that I'll be showing you here. So long press and hold. This guy is the light. It'll start to flash. We can let go. It starts to flash and beep at the same time. You probably can't hear that beep, but I tap once to set neutral. Then I hold it full throttle, tap again to set full reverse, or full throttle rather, one more time to set full reverse. And that gives us calibration. Once it gets done, it blinks a couple more times and comes back ready to operate. Once calibration is complete, you get normal motor operation. So that's what it looks like to calibrate a speed control. And, and like I said, if it does have a uh, two button switch instead of a single button switch like this, you'll be using the set button as your tap not the power button because that'll turn the speed control off. All right, so you try to do that calibration process and a couple things may go wrong. Either it won't start the process or it won't complete the process. So you can't get it to go into calibration mode or as you tap the button, nothing happens, it doesn't respond. Or sometimes you can get it to calibrate to the neutral, you can get it to calibrate to the throttle, but you can't get the reverse to calibrate. So the quickest thing that I always suggest to do before you go any further in your troubleshooting is something that I call the servo test. And that involves involves taking a servo and plugging that into the throttle channel. Now there's a couple simple ways to do this. You can just switch the two wires, but you want to make sure that you can take the pinion gear off or have the car up in the air, because if you turn it on and it's plugged and everything works, the motor might start running and take off across the table. The other option is to take your speed control out of the throttle channel and then plug it into the battery slot on the receiver because there's no signal out of the battery slot, so it'll just power the receiver. So that's how that's set up right now. I'm going to turn this guy on. We get lights, and then when it, it's connected to the steering channel, so as you can see, we get steering there. And now if I take this servo and I use that in the throttle channel, number two, in case we didn't know that which numbers they are. Uh, now it's controlled by the throttle. So basically, I got full range of motion here. It's very similar or close to what it was with the steering, and that's why it can calibrate correctly. A lot of times what will happen over time from handling our radios, you'll, you'll bump the, the different buttons on your radio. Like when I grab my radio, I can easily touch this, and it's turning the brake down. And what that does is now, when I push the brake, it doesn't move at all. So that will make it not calibrate the brake side or the reverse, if you will. And it, let's say it's not all the way down, okay? Let's say it's down to like 50%, so it still works a little bit. And you can see that. It, it barely moves now. So that's a real quick and easy way to get an idea if you need to start adjusting on your buttons or anything like that on your radio. And now this is one that I've talked to folks in tech support, and they think that I'm crazy. Always do this test 
even if your screen looks okay. These radios hide other settings around in there. And you may think that you have your brake set to 100 just because you're looking at the screen, but instead you plug a servo in there and actually look at it, I'm never gonna believe you. So the servo test helps to figure out what the channel is doing visually. If a throttle channel can't make the servo move correctly, it's not gonna be able to calibrate or work with a speed control either. So this is a super quick and simple test uh, that you can do to do some benchtop stuff. And half the reason I have this job is because I knew that the servo test was a thing. So it helps us help a lot of folks not have to send in a speed control for service that doesn't need to be sent in is the main thing. Uh, the other one that we run into, like you, you can plug a servo in that's like, let's say it's a digital servo or whatever, and your radio has these ultra fast frame rates. So the one thing that you might wanna do is check your radio's frame rate settings, because if they're set to the very, very fastest settings that are new cutting edge technology, once in a while, the speed control will be behind that tech a step, and it may not calibrate in those modes. And some of them are designed specifically to those manufacturer's servos to only work with those servos. So you want to double check that those channel assignments and all that stuff are correct, because uh, it may work with a servo and then may make the speed control not work. So in those particular situations, you might want to just double check a few of those uh, speed settings or rate settings. Um, with the particular to the servo speed settings, if you will. Well, that is a real quick look at some simple calibration topics, something that I talk about on a very regular basis around here. And if you called up tech support or sent us an email, a lot of times we direct you to a servo test or we talk about it. Uh, this is exactly that. Uh, hopefully you find this video helpful and helps you do a little bit of troubleshooting. If it does, let us know in the comments down below. It does happen quite a bit that we get help uh, getting folks more videos that are more suited to what they need to know. So let us know in the comments. If you do have any questions for us directly, uh, those will be answered via email. Please shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. We'll be more than happy to help you out. We also do a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobby Wing. We do a giveaway each and every episode of a Hobby Wing combo. To find out how to enter to win, all you have to do is listen to an episode. As always, folks, thanks for watching another episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobby Wing official YouTube channel. We will see you all next time.